Okay, this is a quick how-to video look at modding the original Rode NT1 microphone. At the end, I will include a quick voice recording comparing the modded and unmodded NT1 mics. I will also include a clip of a Stellar X2 mic for an additional reference point in comparing the mics. A quick bit of background, I've had these NT1 mics for several years and I've kept them with the live mic package. But with live shows mostly canceled these days, I decided to bring them home and give them a try with the recording setup. Seeing that these mics look quite a bit different than the current Rode NT1A and the newer NT1 iteration, that sent me to Google on an info search. That led me to a series of comments that said the older NT1 mics are not like the current versions of the NT1A or NT1 at all and less preferred. Ultimately, it all led me to a forum post that spoke of modding these original NT1 mics. That post referenced the post from Jim Williams who designed these original NT1 mics for Rode. That led me directly to his post. He had several good things to say about the build quality of these mics, but he did mention an option that would address some of the typical complaints. The mic can be modded for a different response by changing out two capacitors. The original capacitors are noted to C4 and C5 on the circuit board and are 470 picofarad caps. He suggested these two could be swapped out with either 1500 picofarad or 2200 picofarad caps. It's a fairly simple mod and you can easily try both options and even go back to the original caps if you want. I opted for the 2200 picofarad caps and I purchased the exact same brand that the mics originally used. To open the mic and get to the inside, there are two Phillips screws on the lower side of the mic. I've highlighted the position of the screws here. You'll need a number one Phillips screwdriver for these screws. I also removed the stand adapter for mine just to have it out of the way, but that's not necessary. So remove the two screws and set them aside. Once the two screws are removed, you can slide the electronics out of the mic chassis just by pulling it from the bottom. There is a piece of rubber, a shock absorber material, that keeps pressure on it to keep it from just sliding out, but it will easily pull out. Here you can see the two capacitors that you will be swapping out. They are highlighted. They are noted as C4 and C5 on the circuit board. Here is a quick look at the back of the circuit board. Everything is easily accessible. I'm using solder wick to remove the solder from the two capacitors. These are the two original capacitors. The new capacitors are identical in size and shape so they perfectly replace these. Insert the new caps, solder the leads, and don't forget to trim the leads. Now you're ready to put the electronics back into the mic body. One thing to note is the metal rod at the top of the mic. That is the back side of the microphone. The mic body has a gold colored dot that indicates the front of the mic. This photo shows you the way you'll want to have the mic electronics situated to slide back into the mic body. Again, the metal rod at the top is the back of the microphone, so make sure it's on the opposite side of the gold dot on the microphone. Now don't forget to put the two screws back in. Okay, let's have a quick listen test and you can be the judge. This is a test of the Rode NT1 original microphone versus a modded Rode NT1 microphone. This is the normal microphone. Testing. One, two, three, four, five, six. Testing. Testing. One, two, three, four, five, six. This is the modded Rode NT1 original microphone. Testing, testing, one, two, three, four, five, six. Testing, testing, one, two, three, four, five, six. 
As a final bit of reference, this is a Stellar X2 microphone. Testing, testing, one, two, three, four, five, six. Testing, testing. 